Hey friends, in this live session, we're going to talk about immigration reform. Join me if you're out there today and you're interested in the latest immigration news around the immigration reform efforts on Capitol Hill. Um, and also share this video with other people and um, comment below. Let me know how you're feeling today. It's Wednesday, April 29th. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York. And I'm going to talk with you in this short live session about um, 50 million 50 million in funding, guys, 50 million, and I'm starting my clock here, 50 million in funding to support a pathway to citizenship, 50 million. And then we're also going to touch on a new ICE um, courthouse uh, rule that uh, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, announced um, uh, just yesterday, I believe, yesterday. So I see that folks are starting to join. It's really nice to see you guys. Welcome to this session. And uh, let's get into it. So friends, immigration reform. Um, we've been talking a lot about the legislative proposals that are on the table that would create a pathway to citizenship for um, quite a bit of undocumented ind uh, individuals in the United States today. Specifically, we've been talking about the U.S. Citizenship Act. We've talked um, a little bit about the Citizenship for Essential Workers uh, proposal. We've talked about the Dreamers proposals proposal, um, farm workers, things around TPS holders and others. And so we've been talking about those things and I am going to talk about the border security shortly, but in any event, we know that legislators are pushing the reform effort, right? And we know that the white house is also supportive of reform, comprehensive reform. The question is, how are they going to get there? Well, Today, um, a group of ad an advocacy, major advocacy campaign was launched that has a lot of money behind it that would also help to push immigration reform forward. And so um, $50 million has, has been put on the table to support ad campaigns, and also to support legislators who are behind immigration reform, specifically the type of reform that is meaningful, meaningful from the standpoint of uh, leading to citizenship. And so um, let's let's get into what what came out in the press today. It's nice to see you guys. Thank you for being with me. And so the A so AP is reporting that immigration groups launch $50 million effort for citizenship, $50 million for citizenship or a path to support pathway to citizenship. And uh, according to this article, the effort includes 30 million, a $30 million commitment from a group um, of advocacy organizations calling themselves We Are Home. And some of you may have heard about this group and the efforts that they're doing around advocacy to raise awareness of um, citizenship for undocumented individuals who are here in, in the U.S. Um, in addition to $20 million, a $20 million commitment from a handful of other immigration groups, including the Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg backed uh, Ford U.S. I think that's what they how they refer to themselves. Themselves. Okay, so that's Facebook, right? Mark Zuckerberg uh, of Facebook has uh, put in twenty million dollars to promote citizenship for individuals who are here who are undocumented. Now, what else did the, uh, the AP article say? It says the coalition of groups, which includes Community Change Action, the Service Employees International Union, and the United Farm Workers, among others, is also planning nearly 60 events on May 1st for May Day. So they're going to have a very big push on May 1st um, through TV ads, digital ads, from what I understand, mainly a lot of digital ads out there to promote um, uh, a pathway to citizenship for individuals. And then the article also goes on to say that, um, and it's also launching a paid field effort aimed at defending Democrats 
in difficult seats and supporting pro-immigrant champions in the House and the Senate to make sure they maintain strong support for a pathway to citizenship. And so the way that I'm reading this, guys, and you may interpret this as well, um, that obviously there's some money in here for lobbying efforts um, and supporting campaigns or supporting legislators who support the cause of citizenship um, um, uh, efforts, right? So there's that that's going to happen here. And so certainly this is going to get legislators attention, this big pool of money here that, that these groups now have at their, um, disposal. And then let's see, it's, um, Let's see. What else does it also say? It also says that they're investing 2.5 million to 5 million over the next week of uh, on their field effort in key states, and that part of the focus will be pressuring Democrats to embrace the use of reconciliation. So they are making the strong argument that Democrats, you know, we we. First of all, we went to the poll. We went to the polls. We did our part. We voted for you. We supported you back in November. Now you've got to do your part. Guys, if you read the article, that's precisely what they're saying. Um, you know, now it's time for you guys to do your part and what you need to use every tool at your disposal. And one of those tools is reconciliation. And we, and this group is specifically pushing for reconciliation to for immigration reform efforts to be part of the next reconciliation effort. So that's going to be interesting. So just to summarize guys, $50 million it was announced today that these advocacy groups have about 50 million, $50 million to push a lot of uh, digital campaigns and dollars to support candidate uh, Democrats who are supporting immigration reform. Um, and they're looking forward to next year, right? Next year, November, um, and reminding legislators that next year, November will be meaningful. And so you've got to pay attention to the fact that they are demanding immigration reform. So that's what's going on on the advocacy side of things. So that kind of you know, rounds out the effort that there's a push by legislators. And now there's this uh, enormous push by advocacy groups to bring about immigration reform. Now, the other thing that happened that is interesting is that yesterday, um, was it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday, April 27th, DHS announced new guidance to limit ICE and CBP civil enforcement actions in or near courthouses. Guys, remember the fear and the terror that a lot of people felt last um, during the Trump administration uh, when they went to the courthouses, right? That people were afraid of going to the courthouses because ICE was there apprehending folks. And so now um, that policy has been, um, has, uh, been sort of pulled back. It says today, Secretary of Homeland Security um, uh, Secretary Mayorkas directed ICE and CBP to place new limits on civil immigration enforcement actions in or near courthouses. Uh, and they issued a memorandum about this. And he says that um, uh, ensuring that individuals have access to the courts advances the fair administration of justice, promotes safety for crime victims, and helps to guarantee equal protection under the law. The expansion of civil immigration arrests at courthouses during the prior administration had a chilling effect on individuals' willingness to come to court or work cooperatively with law enforcement. Today's guidance is the latest step in our efforts to focus on civil immigration um, enforcement resources on threats to homeland security and public safety. It further goes on to say, okay, so here's the thing. Who are they going to target, right? Who will they, they, who, so generally speaking, they're saying that they are not going to, you know, hang out at the courthouses anymore and wait for you to show up for your, um, your either criminal matter or your divorce matter or whatever that matter is that you're showing up for. They're not going to be there anymore. 
but they will take certain civil immigration enforcement actions in or near a courthouse in these limited instances. Number one, if it involves a national security matter. Number two, there is an imminent risk of death, violence, or physical harm to any person. Number three, it involves hot pursuit of an individual who poses a threat to public safety. Um, or number four, there is an imminent risk of destruction of evidence material to a criminal case. And then they also say that the guidance, this interim guidance makes clear that civil immigration enforcement is, um, let's see, is permitted against public safety threats in the absence of hot pursuit where necessary and with prior approval. So they have a little language in here that kind of covers themselves in the event that they step outside the bounds of these four um, these four areas here, circumstances. So that's what's going on with ICE. That's um, that's one of the Biden efforts here to roll some things back. And, you know, Biden has hit his 100 days, first 100 days in office. And, you know, you you be the judge of how he has performed. Tell me below what you think uh, of his performance thus far. Were you um, disappointed by anything so far? Yes, we know that the immigration backlog, visa backlog, is still very real and a very big problem um, and very frustrating. Um, but And so that's one issue. Talk about that below. Or, you know, if are you satisfied with how he's performed so far? Or are you saying, well, it's only been 100 days. Let's give him more time. So tell me your thoughts below. I'd love to see what you have to say about how you think the president has performed thus far. So guys, um, oh, before I go, before I leave you, I do want to also mention, and I did mention it during my last video, that... Um, that a group of bipart a, a bipartisan group of senators have been meeting have been meeting to discuss a consensus package that they would like to introduce in the Senate around immigration reform and that consensus package will include things around the border dreamers and maybe some other um, elements of reform. So that's still going on. So keep that in the back of your mind that that's happening uh, at the same time another thing that's going on is, you know, a big push for reconciliation. So as you can see, immigration, there's a number of angles that Democrats are approaching immigration reform uh, with now. And now on top of that, you have the advocacy groups that have stepped in and say, okay, um, we're going to put our money to campaign in and to support legislators who support the issues that we believe in. So all of that is happening. So keep, um, stay watchful of all of these events. And, um, and then also lastly, lastly, I do have on Friday, April 30th, my, um, my marriage petition program will be open again for enrollment. So I want you guys, if you have not yet gotten on the wait list for MPP, uh, visit latoyamcbean.mykajabi.com forward slash MPP. I'm going to put the link below again. Um, get on the wait list if you're planning on filing for your spouse who is either overseas or here in the United States and you want my 45 lessons um, on how to do it right right on how to do it on your own and the insights that I'm sharing through uh, the templates, the video lessons. This is all online, guys. This is an online program, okay? And so uh, get into MPP. You could enroll at your own and go at your own pace, okay? All of the materials will be made available to you at one time. So go at your own pace and get it done the right way way. Okay. So I have my cue here. I've got to get offline, um, and get back to, uh, get back to work, but share this video with other people. Subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the notification bell. If you do not hit the notification bell, YouTube will not tell you when I'm, um, when my videos are published and for, in terms of live sessions, guys, as you can see, I'm I'm just pushing it forward, doing these lives as my schedule permits. So you uh, follow me on Facebook so that when I pop up at random times, um, you will be there. You will know about it. Guys, thanks so much. And um, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.